We live in a totally bonkers world. I'll just go through some of the things that are happening. And this video is about the it's just some of, of the little things that are, are driving me crazy with this world and some of the claims about climate change. And then I'm going to show you sanity. So the bulk of this video, and it's a short video, is about the sanity. And it's a broadcast by William Happer. I've taken a section out of it. That's Professor William Happer. Now, in this world we're in, you know, we've got a German minister who now threatens indefinite um, bans on weekend driving for everybody. So you're not allowed to take your car out on a weekend. Once you accept the CO2 narrative and the climate alarmism, then these bans on things like you can't drive a car, totally changing your life, by the way, you can't drive a car on weekends, but they're after that all week, actually. That's only the beginning. These things are then logical because you've accepted the premise on CO2. And that's why understanding that the premise is wrong, that this is a scan, understanding that it's total fraud, is so important. Because once you understand that, the whole edifice of everything falls down. Anyway, let's carry on. So, not just German bans on driving for the weekend being proposed, but also why climate change is inherently racist. Or you could say climate change has got a big impact on the LBGTQIA2S plus community. You know, then if you're not happy with that one, how about the climate change is not gender neutral, it's misogynist. Or you could say that climate change uh, is also a, a crisis for women's health, not men's, it's selective. You know, just the way it picks out one polar bear to make it ill, it, it picks out women. And um, the human footprint, of course, what it comes down to in the end, of course, is, <laughs> is we all breathe out about two pounds of CO2 by weight per day, breathing out of 40,000 parts per million, by the way. So with about 8 billion people on Earth, that's 16 billion pounds a day of CO2 coming out. So the human footprint's quite significant. And there are those like the WEF who actually call for this fantastic reduction in human population. Well, a good way to go about that is to control CO2. It's the very essence of life on Earth. See, at the heart of all this is CO2. It's the very heart of it, which is why I'm concentrating on that. Because Happer being right, and he is, means the whole thing's fake anyway. Now, this is a graph from NASA, covering the 1880 to 2022 period. And it's the anomaly, which is a very small range. If you look at the range of temperatures on the left-hand side, it's very, very small. In fact, it's just 2 degrees Fahrenheit in the range there, which is just 1.12 degrees centigrade to take the temperature from 1880 right up to 2022. So if you look at that, it looks alarming, doesn't it? Now, I can say this, and I've done many videos on this. Those temperatures have fiddled in any event. But now I want to show you the same graph, but put on a normal thermometer scale and date it back just the same way, the same period to 1880. And there it is. Now, of course, I can really start to um, exaggerate the y-axis, the vertical axis here, and show you how they get that growth at the end. This is the same data, by the way. Now, actually, all, we've, all that's happened is we've increased the temperature by a bit over one degree since the Little Ice Age. That is not a problem. It's been a huge advantage to us. And it wasn't all caused by CO2. Even porn. That's right, porn, you know, pornographic materials and videos, they produce the same amount of carbon dioxide as a whole of Belgium, a study finds. People are being paid to do these studies. Now, that's the insanity world I've covered. What I'm going to do now is just play four minutes of Professor William Harper's presentation in Australia. And I'm going to give a link to the full 40-odd minute presentation. And I'm going to end the video with that, because what you're going to meet now is a highly professional uh, a, a, a professor who represented, well, who we advised on, on three USA presidents, um, a professor who knows his stuff, uh, and not only that, but a gentleman, a real gentleman. So introducing you now to Professor William Happer in a four-minute section out of the video, the full video, which is well worth watching, believe me, is linked in the description below. Thank you for watching. And this is the final 
hard physics slide, and uh, I'll, I'll quickly get off of this, but the, a 1% change is, is like changing the emissivity of the Earth by 1%. So it turns out that here are two other interesting guys that you should know about. One of them is uh, Josef Stefan. He's, he's the only Slovenian physicist I ever heard of, but he was a great one. And he was the one who discovered this uh, F equals epsilon sigma t to the fourth, that first equation there. So it's called the Stefan Boltzmann equation because he made another important discovery. He discovered this graduate student, Boltzmann. <laughs> and he said to Boltzmann, I have measured how radiation goes into space and it goes as the fourth power of the temperature. That's a huge effect, you know, because that means if you double the temperature, you increase radiation by two to the fourth by 16, you know. So it's an amazing factor. But Boltzmann couldn't figure out why would it be the fourth power. And so he assigned this poor student, who turned out to be not such a poor student, uh, the job of fun, where, where does the factor of four come from? And he solved the problem. It turned out, for those of you who have a science background, it, it came from simple electromagnetic theory, which had just been developed by Maxwell and from thermodynamics. So it's, it's something where you can derive that if you're Boltzmann in four or five lines. It's, a, it's an amazing feat. But you can't get the coefficients in front of it, but you get the fourth power. And the, the result of that is that a 1% change in radiation to space is a quarter percent, that same factor of four, but it goes in the denominator, a quarter percent change in temperature, absolute temperature. And so you can do the calculation for warming in your head because the absolute temperature of the Earth's surface is about 300 Kelvin. A quarter percent of 300 Kelvin is, or if I put in the right number, it's about 0.75, it's actually 0.71 if I put in all the correct values. So the, the direct warming from CO2 is less than one degree, 0.7 degrees, very small. And uh, this is a problem if you're a climate scientist because Nobody cares if it's 0.7 degrees. You can't feel 0.7 degrees. The air conditioner doesn't trip on and off if you have 0.7 degrees. So um, what to do? Uh, well, you invoke huge positive feedbacks in all of these UN climate models. So uh, instead of acting like a, a normal system, Somehow just the 0.7 degrees gets multiplied by factors of three or four or five, even 10 in some cases that uh, you, it's almost impossible to justify this idea of a positive feedback. But you need it, otherwise CO2 is too wimpy to be worried about. So, you, so they've got this problem that the first step, how much does CO2 affect radiation to space, it almost doesn't affect it. So you need something in the second step to change this radiation to space into a temperature that's scary, and that's the positive feedback. Um, the problem with positive feedback is this guy here. This is uh, a French chemist, Le Chatelier. And Le Chatelier noted that in most natural processes in nature, feedbacks are negative. You know, positive feedbacks almost never occur. And yet we're assuming there's a positive feedback. If we don't assume a positive feedback, we don't get money for our laboratory next year because nobody's worried. 